Yeah, so I told my friends uh, that after this is over, I'm going to write a big piece about this and uh, write a blog and get my own perspective on what uh, what I've been watching on this. So I can't wait for that. Um, thoughts? Uh, okay, Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? Well, Kawhi Leonard's laugh because it just sounds like he's a robot. You know, <laughs> 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 uh, we turned that into a, a sounder for the show for a while. It's just so it was just so unusual because you he, he just doesn't really give us anything to talk about from an audio perspective. And that laugh was uh, that laugh was something. Although I feel bad, I, like we made so much use of it, I feel like maybe he'll never laugh again after <laughs> after realizing what people did. <laughs> Yeah, so who was your role model uh, in the sports industry and uh, as a, and a sports athlete growing up? Uh, as an athlete or as a sportscaster? Oh, both, both. Athlete and a sportscaster? Who was your uh, two role models? Well, uh, there was a couple of guys, like, locally uh, in... in uh, I grew up uh, right outside New York City, and there was a guy named Warner Wolf who did local sports for New York Forever, and he was really funny and did highlights differently than a lot of other people did, so I... I really, I really uh, sort of gravitated toward him. I mean, I had a ton of athletes as a, you know, I liked them all, you know. I mean, I, there, there were so many, you know, Jordan obviously was one. Charles Barkley was one of my favorite athletes of all time. And, uh, you know, luckily I've, I've been able to call him a little bit of a friend over the last few years. So that's been kind of fun. But, you know, I, I there, there are so, like, I was a huge football guy. My team growing up was the Dallas Cowboys. So a lot of those players uh where, where i was very cool yeah. and watched them you know uh, and and to see just to see those guys and do the things they do was always a lot of fun but literally i mean i wouldn't say i had a role model as an athlete growing up but i just liked watching a lot of guys do the things they did one of my favorite teams ever was the early 80s 76ers uh andrew tony mm-hmm. charles barkley julius irving they were just a fun bunch of guys uh, to watch, and and they, you know, they had Bobby Jones, Mark Ivoroni, Caldwell Jones. They were just a, a crazy bunch. They were a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm a, speaking of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan too. So what are your thoughts on the team this year in the free agency and draft? Well, I thought they did. I, I thought Ceedee Lamb fell to them, which was an incredible thing because they really needed to get somebody in the defensive backfield after Byron Jones left. But they were they were they were preparing for that with who, where they could spend their money. Um, but to get C.D. Lamb in the first round and then still get Trevon Diggs in the second round, I think was a huge coup for them. You know, in free agency, the biggest thing they did was re-sign Amari Cooper. I mean, they've added a few pieces here and there, and they signed Alden Smith, which I can't quite figure out. He hadn't played since 2015. But they still haven't taken care of the most important thing, which is the quarterback. And, you know, you can say, well, Dak's doing this, and it takes two to tango. And at the end of the day, if they were willing to show him the love and I think they will eventually, so I don't know what they're waiting for. Uh, I, yeah. I, I just they, they might have reverse engineered this thing to perfection, right? Like they've signed a right tackle, an inside linebacker, a running back who's had off the field issues where he's been suspended and held out last year to a big deal before they've taken care of their quarterback. That is not the way you would normally go about doing this. Uh, you know, they just signed another player, uh, Cam Irving, last week. The Kansas City yeah. Chiefs as a depth on the offensive line, which is great. But at the end of the day, until they get the uh, until they get the quarterback, uh, I'll, I'll hold my reservations because I'm I'm happy that Andy Dalton gives us depth there, but I'm not looking forward to Andy Dalton be the starting quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. I just think Dak's better. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you this question because my friend Steve he told me to ask this to you. Uh, we all of us watch the Michael K show also, and you always have segments on the Michael K show uh, usually on Mondays. I think if not, if I'm not Wednesdays, mistaken, Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday. Um, and yeah, he told me to ask you this, but do you like Peter Rosenberg? I love Peter Rosenberg. He's awesome. <laughs> no, he's, he's, uh, I, think so, the whole, I think the whole show, the whole crew is great. And, and I think Peter's hilarious. Yeah. Um, so what are you, okay. Who, who, who is the funniest person on the Go Look at Ringo show and the NFL live show? Uh, you know, I'm going to give junior the, uh, the award on our, on the radio show. NFL live, man, that's, We've had some yeah. we've had some characters through the years. Man. <laughs> I mean, we've had some Damian Woody is hilarious. Ryan Clark yep. is hilarious. Yep. Back in the yep. day, Mark Schlereth was hilarious. Teddy Bruschi, very underrated funny. Like you wouldn't think of him as being funny, but he he I mean, I, boy, to, to give it to one person on the NFL live crew, that would be difficult. That would be difficult. Yeah, I, speaking of Damian Woody, I had the opportunity of interviewing him on my yeah, show two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Um, 
So favorite or uh, favorite sports movie? <sighs> favorite sports movie of all time. Wow. Um, I, I I may have to like break this down. Like 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 okay. Like one of my favorite. I think the most underrated sports movie of all time is The Replacements. Uh, with Keanu Reeves as a quarterback. I mean, there's some really good lines in that movie. Is it realistic? No, it's not realistic, but it's it's really, really, really funny, and I think it's really good. I mean, there's a part of me that says the default answer is uh, is Hoosiers, but that movie, as Junior likes to say, is about passing. So I, it's, I'm not sure it's the best. Uh, Remember the Titans is always really, really good. There's no question about that. Honestly, like, the, but the best, I think the best sports movie for accuracy ever made was Bull Durham about life in the minor leagues. Uh, and I think that one was really, really, it, it captured what it was like to be a minor leaguer and the stuff that goes on in, in uh, on those bus trips and all that kind of stuff. So those would be the first ones that come to mind. Yeah, so before I get to the last few things here with you, um, uh, my friend James and my friend Julian and Bobby, uh, they do podcasts also. Uh, they told me to ask you if they if you're considering if you would consider going on their podcast also sometime. So is this a four for one? Is that what we're doing here? To tell, <laughs> to tell James, Julian, and Bobby they're heavily under consideration. How about and they're friends okay. of yours? Obviously, that goes a long way. Uh, thank you. And, oh, and also, no, I, I, almost, I forgot Global Kid Media. Check his page out. The one who just joined. He's he, he's 13 years old. He's on a thousand interviews. Wow, it's crazy! So Global I, Kid Media. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right, I'll check yeah. it out. Yeah. So the last few things here, um, before uh, before I let you go, um, I, I've been asking this question to to all my guests uh, about the late Kobe Bryant and getting their their own perspective on him. So for you, as an analyst and as a sports reporter, and um, what has Kobe Bryant mean to you, and uh, what has what does Mama mentality mean to you, and what does Gianna mean to you, his daughter? Well, obviously, the whole thing is just horrifically sad. Um, you know, it's it's still hard to put into words how you know how you can sort of relate to that happening to both because the first thing a, a lot of people thought when the helicopter we, we heard the helicopter might have went down well who else was on it you know and to find that his daughter was on it is just and the, everybody but i mean to find that a father and son and there was more than one of them a father and daughter rather that perished at the same time is just horrific but it is interesting in light of the last dance right in this episode especially this last week we learned about michael jordan and what a teammate he is and all that kind of stuff he can be and how hard he can be sounded a lot like the Mamba mentality to me, you know, and it's pretty clear. Yeah. It's pretty clear that Kobe uh, in one way or shape or another was going to fashion how he approached the game the same way Michael did. And, and just, you know, he, and reliving Kobe's mentality after his tragic passing and whatever what he said about it. And then seeing the last dance and how this play out plays out, it, you, you just can't help but draw the comparisons between the two of them, how they were so, steadfastly focused in the way that they felt it was best for them to not only be their best, but to make their teammates their best. Yeah, well said. And then uh, the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the frontline people? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's been miraculous. And, uh, you know, I, I have a buddy of mine who's a, uh, who's a patrolman out in Denver, and he actually tested positive for the virus, but he's still going out there and doing his job oh. and been asymptomatic. He's doing fine. Um, but just to see what they've been doing in New York has been absolutely remarkable. And we've done a lot of that uh, on the show with our Hometown Heroes segment, just to see. We, we met so many people who, in the face of danger, went to the problem instead of run, running away from it. You know, we, we interviewed a guy in upper Michigan who's in his upper 70s and has uh, some respiratory issues. And he drives elderly around and makes sure they get to their appointments. And he's like, no, I'm, this is my calling. I, I am more I'm more likely than others to still feel like this is my this is my duty and what I need to do. And especially those in the in the greater New York, New Jersey and Fairfield County area in Connecticut have absolutely answered the bell and have been absolutely remarkable. And, and it's a real testament to their strength of character and the strength of commitment to the job, knowing what they face every day. It's been truly heroic. That's a word we use a lot and throw it around a lot. Those guys deserve all the praise they can get. Yeah. So uh, for so whoever's in this live, uh, my cousin and I, my brother, we have a GoFundMe page, uh, and uh, so the link is on my Instagram. Uh, we've been raising money for the frontline people and the uh, and the local food businesses. We raised over two k, and we've been handing out sandwiches and a lot of supplies to all That's the awesome. nurses, doctors, uh, to the local places near us. And we've been doing that. Uh, actually, my brother, my my brother continued that today. I, obviously, I couldn't go because of the interviews, but 
Um, but we're going to still continue it this whole week and until this thing ends. So we're trying to help in any way. And please, everyone go donate. The link is in my bio on Instagram. And uh, thank. Uh, first of all, th- there he is, the great Trey Wingo from Golik and Wingo. You can find him on ESPN, NFL Live even. Follow him on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on short notice. I know you have some other things here, but we'll do a longer interview next time. So. You got it. I appreciate it. Thank you, and, and thank you very much, and thank you for what you're doing, too, giving the GoFundMe page. That's fantastic. So yeah, thank you. Thanks so much yeah. for the time, and we'll, we'll talk again soon, okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Cheers.